Okay, here we go. So we're back in our team site, uh, SharePoint Ninja's team site. Again, just a recap from the previous video. Uh, I have a home uh, a home site here. This is going to be my intranet home page. It's going to look look a lot prettier than this, but this is where we're starting off. And then under the home page, I have a subsite or a department site called uh, SharePoint Ninjas. Now, in the last video, just a quick recap. We set up the my links. We I showed you how to personalize this, how to make this personal to the user. Uh, we set up announcements. I told you how to show you how to set up target audience so that way you can have announcements personalized uh, to a certain group of people, uh, as well as uh, different categories that you can use and you can leverage. Now let's let's talk about documents. Documents is probably the number one reason why most organizations move to SharePoint uh, to manage documents. They're either trying to move the organization off of file shares, which have a bunch of issues with security, access, uh, centralization, duplication, not really a lot of metadata, finding things. File shares are just, they just, at the time that they were built, were not really designed to, to to support some of the behavior or the, the new way of that we interact with documents and collaborate with documents. So most of those get migrated over to a document, uh, to SharePoint and uh, leveraging document libraries, as well as other uh, document management systems or record management systems. Since SharePoint 2010, Microsoft has really improved the supportability and the feature and the capacity of SharePoint and, and its document libraries to have to tell a very good story with managing documents, managing records, uh, and things along those nature. So if you look at the the Magic Quadrant by uh, Gartner, um, my, uh, SharePoint is is actually uh, one of the one of the leaders in that regard. So the issue with documents because they're so popular, one uh, most document libraries are abused, meaning that there is very little planning or strategy on how to migrate these things over. To where you get into SharePoint and you actually end up with the same issue you had on the file share. You can't find the documents, or uh, you don't probably you may not have the proper security. There may be abuse in security to where you're pushing outside of governance and best practices to where either you're exposing everything or you're you're not locking things down appropriately or you're breaking inheritance too many times and it just becomes an admin nightmare. Uh, the second piece is, in, in most of, unfortunately, most of the SharePoint consultants will come in and have you add all this metadata to your document library. Well, that's good, and the, the intent is good, and I think the reasoning is valid. It's just the approach is, should be a bit different. The problem with so much metadata on the document library, especially with documents, which probably is 85% of the activity of either consuming documents or managing documents or storing documents is that you, you you give the end user so many options they have to fill out uh, in order to keep things uh, organized and tagged correctly. So I'm going to show you a, actually a technique that's very simple um, to where you can both have folders and that's another thing they try to do. They say, hey, you can't use folders because you need metadata and folders just kill that. And actually, in, in, in a way, there that's true, but there's features in SharePoint that allow you to use folders and still tag documents, and I'll show you that trick. Uh, the second one is that, um, you know, it's just, you know, just want to keep things simplified. So, actually, let's get started. Enough yapping. Let's get started. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take, when you create a team site, you actually get a document library. For most site templates, you actually get a default document library. So, let's just leverage that. So, I'm going to highlight it, click the Libraries tab. Go into settings, and I think the first thing we want to do, we want to add a department. Now, this is important. So, if you add a department for each one of the department sites that you create, any document that you dump in this document library is going to automatically be tagged with that document, and I'll show you how to do that. So, let's go here and create column, and let's just name it department. And actually, there is a, a couple of cool things uh, we can do with departments. All right, so we go to department, then we hit manage metadata, and then we expand the taxonomy. And I think out of the box, you get these three term sets. And you notice that, you know, not to get into the term store and how this all set up, but either way, the icon with folders, these are groups. Everything that has an icon where it has like multiple terms or this icon that has multiple, it's a term set. 
and underneath this set is going to be your terms. Now, these you get out of the box, and they're under the people group, and this, there's a reason for that, because these are going to be mapped to the profile property uh, for the users, and with that, you can do some very, very cool things. So, if possible, I would say for your department, you want to leverage this term set, or you want to create a term set that, that does have, that has configure or has similar behavior as this one here. Okay, so we're going to do department. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select this. Okay, now in my department, I didn't have any terms. So if I go here to a document, and then I go new, let's just create this guy here on the fly. No, actually, this is a bad example. Well, all right, so I'll go here, new, save as, let's give it a name. Oops, hey, what do you name these things? I would, I, I just known that from a previous test. This is not obvious that you, that's not how you spell my name. This is not obvious on, you can rename the file here. Okay. So there's no save, right? That's what I was looking for. So there's no save. It's automatically saying my name did not get updated. I'm hoping this gets updated soon. Okay, anyway. So if I go here and go to Edit Properties, right? You will notice that there are no departments to choose from. And that's because we haven't loaded them yet. So what you can do, you can go to your site settings for your team site. And then you go to Term Store Management. And then actually this allows you to add departments here. Uh, so we have, let's see, how many departments we want to add. Let's keep it simple for now. So let's just add in county. And I'm just hitting enter here. Of course, SharePoint Ninjas. Human Resources. Operations information technology and that's it oh let's throw marketing in there okay now if you get to the screen especially if you're doing office 365 and you're following along because you are a student of the class one of the things that you may want to do if if you're if you get the screen here and you're unable to add terms you have to make sure that you are a term store administrator. And the only way to set that is that you go to, um, let me just make sure, okay, so let's say, before I get out of here. So you go to the uh, apps icon here, admin, and then under admin, you click on SharePoint. Now, if you're familiar with like SharePoint administrators, this is what they call the tenant administrators. So most of the things in SharePoint administ uh, central administrator you'll see on on-prem, you got a subset of that, but some, pretty similar to the same functionality for the tenant administrator for SharePoint Online. So here you just go to Term Store, and then this option here should be enabled, and you would just go ahead and type your name, click check name, and then that will make you the term set admin. And then from there, you should be able to bounce back and start to earn t uh, add terms. Okay, so let's get back to our site. Okay, so now I have the terms added. So let me go ahead and tag this guy. And then uh, this is going to be SharePoint Ninja. So that guy there, and then click save. Oh, t the Sean test finally kicked in. So the rename, the name actually worked. Okay, so I promise you that. So the problem you want you want to avoid as much as possible, right, is to have to select SharePoint Engine for each and every document that you upload. So if you upload in bulk, say for example you're uploading a thousand documents or five thousand documents, you don't want to have to go through and tag each one of those. So the best way to handle that scenario is to set the default value. So what you want to do is go in here to library settings. Let's go back into that department. And then here, let's just go ahead and say the default value for this one is going to be the SharePoint Ninjas. Okay? All right. So now now I have this set. Now if I go here and upload a bunch of documents, uh, by default, I should get the SharePoint Ninja department. So let's give that a try. 
So here I'm just dragging and drop a group of documents. I got seven there. And as you see, now we're defaulted to SharePoint Ninja. So now if I'm doing a search, if I'm doing an enterprise search and I'm not in this team site and I want to find documents like 96 and make sure it's coming from the SharePoint Ninja site, I can search on that term. I can search on that department name. Uh, and this is also helpful. So if you have policies for, for example, or budget, for example, so if you're a manager of multiple departments, you just want to search budget, but you only want budgets for a certain department, I can show you how to set up your search refiner to include this department, and then you can filter by that. So tagging these doc documents by department is, is going to uh, give you a lot of flexibility. Okay, so let's, let's keep going. So what I want to do now is create a folder. Now our group... Uh, the SharePoint Ninjas group, again, there are developers, admins, architects, and managers. So let's create a folder called developers. Now here, this is where developers is going to keep all of their documents and project-related documents. And then I'm going to create another subfolder under developers called client, client side technology. Okay. So this is where it gets interesting. So far, everything I've done so far is pretty basic. There's really no, that's very common, right? I, I didn't show you any cool tricks yet. So the cool thing about folders, if you leverage them right, there is actually a setting here a lot of people overlook, but it's the column default value setting. Now with the column default value setting, you can come in here for any given folder and give it the default value for that folder. So with that, that allows you to automatically tag documents that are dumped in this folder with these default values. And most of the time, that's all you need. So as you're setting up these folders, you say, hey, folder, you know, I, documents in this folder should be tagged as X. So that way you can dump thousands of documents in this one folder. They're automatically tagged at the time of upload. Now, the thing about this default uh, value setting it has to be set before you drop the document in. So if you drop in 10,000 documents, so now if you if you have your, your document library set up, you have all this folder structure, but you never set the default value, 9 times out of 10, you probably did not, uh, you will have to go through a migration tool. So I would, use, I would download like ShareGate or a Content Manager or one of those guys and migrate, create another folder structure, set up your default values for each one of those, and then use the tool to migrate those documents over. And, and I would use a migration tool if you need to preserve uh, versioning, uh, created date, modified date, who, you know, who modified it, so on and so forth. If you don't need to preserve that, if you don't care about that stuff, uh, then you can just create the file structure, folder structure, in addition to, probably in the same library or a different library, and then just use Windows Explorer and dump those files over. <coughs> Excuse me. To move those files over. And then it would pick up the metadata. Okay, so the default value we want to set for here, we actually do not have the column created yet. So I got ahead of myself. So let's pop back out with settings. Now, the one column we want to enable is enterprise metadata keywords. And this is just a check mark. Now, the enterprise keywords, if you're not familiar with this, this is a term set. Uh, yes, term set in the term store, but it's enterprise wide. So uh, just like any other tagging or other mechanism that you have, you can come in here and add in keywords, uh, and then they, they will tag the documents appropriately. So now, before we get into that, <clears throat> and that's a lifesaver. This is, this is the one feature that allows you to give documents many terms or metadata without creating site columns for all the variations or for all the key pieces. Not saying that you will never create site columns. There's a way to create site columns, but from my experience, when I walk in after a consulting company or a group of consultants that set up the IA or a situation where the IA is not set up at all, they abuse site columns. They abuse them to where they want to they create a site column for every metadata. If you're creating a bunch of site columns and they're all single line text, that's an indicator that you're, you're probably not tagging them right. Right? You, you enable enterprise metadata keywords, and then you can go in here and tag them um, the same way. And you can have multiple values in the text that show up. Okay, enough with that. So 
Let's go back to our column default settings. And let's go ahead and start tagging our folders with some default values. So now I have keywords here. And for the developers folder, I'm gonna just tag it uh, developer. Still working here. All right, so so I'm gonna use default value, and I'm gonna give it developer. Now these are gonna pop up for me because I've been testing this out, and then SharePoint developers. Okay, so that's gonna be the default for developer folder, and for client side. I'm going to do something a little bit different. For client side, these are going to represent the different client side technologies that we use. So in here, we're going to do Angular JS. Which again, it's already here because I've been testing with it. Uh, Bootstrap. Uh, jQuery. And then that's enough for that. So now. Anything I dump in here is going to automatically get tagged with um, with those keywords. And that can be very helpful. So <clears throat> what I can do here now, so on the developers, I'm just going here and dump in another bunch of test documents. And I spent the, the hardest time creating these test documents, I tell you. Um, if you know any way of creating test documents or a, a tool that I can generate, tens of thousands of documents please let me know just leave a comment and I really would really appreciate it because I actually I want to do some load testing uh, with SharePoint online and uh, show you guys a, a few things so anyway so client-side technology I got this loaded so again all of these guys are going to be automatically tagged with all the keywords so there I'm done so in a matter of 45 seconds whatever it took me to upload these 30 documents um, I have everything tagged, everything's properly tagged. Now I can interact and work with this document and not have to deal deal with metadata. So now if I go in here and do edit properties, you can see that I can go in for any given document and override this document. So say for example with this one, so you know what, this is not Bootstrap, AngularJS, or any of that stuff. This guy is underscore... JS, right? Yeah, maybe I just put a paste. I'm hesitant to put that dot JS because I think it may treat it as a file or something like that. So I just do. I'll just add that guy there. So so that's underscore JS. So now I have the ability to set defaults for any given file. I can overwrite. Uh, actually, let's show the keyword column here in this view. So let's go to modify view. And then go here and check keywords. All right. So now as I click in here, you can see all of the keyword values for that particular document. Okay. So uh, again, the, the keywords is going to keep things at a minimum. Um, it allows you to use folders uh, by setting the default value. Uh, option for those and um, you can work you can work with a bunch of documents uh, any given time have them tagged accordingly um, it's just that when you create these folders you just have to remember to set the default value uh, and do it before you upload the document into that folder because it would not retrofit if you if it's an afterthought so let's go here So we have our developer folder, and then we have some other files here at the root uh, part of the library. So l let me show you another trick as far as a governance standpoint of how you can secure folders without breaking inheritance all over the place. So you actually you are going to how come I'm not getting a new folder option? Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Let me go inside the library here. So let me go to create a folder. And I usually call it either secure or private or something along those lines. And with this one, this is the one you're actually going to break inheritance. So the, the, the thing about it is, is that you want to group as much as possible all of the broken inheritance or the exceptions to the security model. 
All right, so when we created the subsite, we broke inheritance. So everything here is going to be secure. And you can determine who outside of this department should have access and who outside of this department, what should they have access to. And that's going to either going to flip into two ways. One, you're going to create a private site and only give them an every one folder, very similar to your My Drive. Or you're going to create a public site and then start creating private folders within that. And that's how you secure it. So that way you're not doing so many one-offs. So this private folder, we actually want to set this guy up initially to have inheritance broken. And the way that we do that is that we go to the share. And then you see who is this shared with. And this is way too many people, right? Everyone except. So this is not private at all. Click advanced. Stop inheriting. So for this particular folder, we just broke inheritance. And what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of all permissions. So now this guy is blank. And now what we're going to do is only grant a few people permissions. And that few people will be myself, one person. All right, so now I'm the only one to have access to this. Now, actually, I want to, let's broaden a little bit. We do have a group called managers. So the ninja managers are going to give them access. Right. So now the managers know that if they go into private, that's only things that their management group should be able to see. Okay, so let's look and see what this guy looks like from a search perspective. So I have a few documents in here. Um, so let's do a, a simple search on 95. By now, we should have all these documents indexed. And so far, we're looking good. So we did a simple search on 95, found it which is to be expected, right? Because I searched on the title of the document. Uh, now let's do a search on, I know that news feed feels like a search box, doesn't it? Uh, Angular JS. Wow. So now everything in the Angular JS folder is now popping up uh, in, in the results, right? And none of these, I pretty much guarantee you that none of these folders or files have the term AngularJS inside of them, right? So we got AngularJS, this is matching on the folder and it's showing the keywords for that folder. But for all the other documents and files, the keyword that we tagged are, are not, it's not showing up. So again, leveraging keywords, leveraging uh, enterprise keywords and folders and setting the default values will save you a ton of time. And you get the benefits of all that metadata with those 15, 20 fields to fill out per document into a single column to where now you can still batch upload, do what you need to do, interact with these documents without all of that headache. And again, those are some of the reasons why it, one, impedes adoption because it becomes so complex to use with all these options that you want to tag. But then on the flip side, from an information architect perspective, hey, you got to tag these documents or else you won't be able to find it. This is the middle ground. This is the this is the easy way to do it. Now, let me show you another trick we can do. So, if you don't, if you're not familiar with search, let me just quick brief uh, under, uh, on, uh, hit on search. Search has uh, two options. When you do a search, you get a site search, and that's the, and that's this page that we're seeing here. And then, if you do everything, you get a, a global search for everything within your farm or within your SharePoint environment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do execute a global search. And you notice that you have different options here. This is how you know you're in the search center. That's the name of it, uh, to, where you're executing a global search. One of the things I want to do is filter by department. Currently, right now, this refiner does not have department on there. So let's add it. So I go to the uh, search center, the global search page. Click edit. Just modify this web part, the refinement web part. Microsoft did a very good job with making this super easy. And that's why these terms are going to come into play. So in here, I'm going to look for uh, the term set department. Double click on this guy. And now it added it to the list. It added it to the bottom of the refiner. So we want to bump this up to maybe right under file type. And then under that, uh, it's called department, but we actually want it to, to display as departments. So we put a display name there. Then everything else is fine. And you're going to show a max of 50. It's going to sort of and descending. So we're good to go. And then click OK here. Check this in. Publish it. 
execute my search again and then there's my department so now when, when we get to load all the other departments here if I do a search on policy for example I'm not sure if this is going to make a hit or not so all these policies are agreements have that are in there uh, these are the ones that are sh on the SharePoint Ninja but as we build out the other departments you may have HR you may have uh, legal or whatever the other departments may be then you can select this and say no I, I meant only the ones from HR or I meant only the ones from legal so now you have the ability to sort by the various departments and this is again um, a really key piece so with that that's the key with document libraries that's the easy way the most simple simplistic way to set up and configure with light information architecture that you actually can get a lot of mileage out of by just leveraging keyword enterprise setting and to configure the default value and still keep your folder structure because we're all used to our folders we all love our folders but in the end we saw we still get in documents tagged accordingly okay so that's on document library I'll see you in the next course where we'll talk about uh, content types